Hey, my name is Mark Smithson. I'm uh, I'm a high schooler in Pennsylvania. Right on. Well, thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how's it all? How y'all doing? Outstanding. I I had a question. Uh, I've been in school. I've been studying European history and a lot of the revolutions. And I was looking at our uh, our system, and I was thinking, what events would have to take place for there to be a complete reform of Congress? And I was wondering what you thought about that. Like, what events do you think would have to take place for that? What do you mean by a reform of Congress? Uh, basically clearing the House, like wiping all the slates clean, wiping all the lobbyists out, and mm-hmm. actually starting from scratch again. So, like, by reform, you mean get rid of entirely? Yeah, get rid of entirely and reinstate a better system. Wait, 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 wait. If you could get rid of Congress entirely, why would why would you want to re- replace it with anything? I'm just I'm just saying in theory, if you had the opportunity to get rid of Congress, even if you're not going to replace it, but what would have to happen for that to happen peacefully? Well, you have to understand the actual role of Congress from the perspective of the people who are in charge of this country. Congress is not a representation of the people. Congress is not a body that gets things done. Congress is a front group. It is a mythology of government that this is the representation of the people. And it's a good excuse for them to do all the things that they were going to do anyways, to continue to keep exploiting people and exercise as much power over the people of this country as they will tolerate. So Congress is there in a way to, as that serving as that front group to also, in, in a small sense, strike a balance. But, you know, as in if the superclass wanted to get away with something really egregious, like if they wanted to take all of our guns and they wanted to find out, like, if they could do that, you know, if they could really get away with it, like how how believable is that for the American people? Well, if they could get it through Congress, you know, maybe they can get the people to accept that policy when they actually try to enforce it. But the idea of being able to replace your congressman every two years has a great, you know, pacifying effect on the American people. And, oh, is, is something wrong with government? Well, you know what? You didn't vote, so you can't complain. You better show up in two years, and then you can change out, you know, because divers like uh, politicians are, you know, full of shit and need to be changed a lot. But that doesn't work. It doesn't work. You, what do you do? You get another politician. You get another product of the system. You get another product of the corrupt electoral process and the two-party system that we know is designed not to serve the people's interests but to pervert it. And So I think it would take a complete collapse of the federal government to make Congress go away. Congress is an arm of the federal government. It is a front group that pacifies the American people to believe that the – Actions of the government are in their best interest. It is a propagandizing tool, not a, not a legislating tool, not a representational tool. That is its actual function. And I'm actually kind of optimistic here because I do think the federal government is going to collapse within our lifetimes. I think we're going to see a, a radical move towards localism around the world as people realize that consolidating power is not in anybody's best interest except for those in power. And when we do that, when we get to the point where we're, I, I would hope, in an orderly manner dissolving the federal government, Congress will be simply disbanded, and those people will go back to their homes, and they won't get to be in charge of anybody that they don't deserve to be uh, exercising authority over a- a- ever again. At least you, you would hope if the state governments don't get too carried away at that point. But if it, if it happens that way, there's no need to replace Congress with anything. If it's a situation of just getting rid of the guys in there and getting new guys in, like these guys were all elected. You know, if if the citizenry is is the same and the electoral the the electorate is the same, then the same politicians will be elected. And you're not going to do anything good by by changing the politicians. Greece held a vote of no confidence on their government. They wiped their government out and elected all new people. And how is Greece doing? Terrible. You know, so really, from my perspective, at least the answer is to re- replace it with nothing, as as Adam said. And, you know, how how that comes down the pipe. Well, there's a there's a few different theories on that. Mark, does that answer your Hi. question? Yes, that does. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mark. So wait, you're a high school student. Right, have a good one. Hold on, Mark. You're a high school student. Okay. Are there a lot of people in high school asking these questions these days? Um, there's a, there's a fair amount. Um. 
actually another one of my friends, Sam. She calls in occasionally. She's a good friend mm-hmm. of mine from high school. Awesome. Excellent. Well, thank you so much yeah. for calling in. Really appreciate it. Do you, have an, do you have an answer to the caller question of the day? What would you do if another country was sending drones into America and killing hundreds of children? That's a, that's a good one. Stumped? I'd probably have to try to get to that country and try to, try to actually start a guerrilla movement, guerrilla warfare, because you can't fight what you can't see. Huh. Well, that's funny. That's, that seems to be what uh, some people are doing over here. Well, surprisingly yeah, few, actually, look, but very few. You look, you look at places like Ireland and Iraq and Afghanistan and Vietnam, all of those groups that are opposing the major powers, the reason they're able to do that is because they don't fight like a major power. We're in the mindset of we have to fight another major entity. It's been going on that, that for so long, and now that guerrilla warfare is introduced, it's like, yeah, we took a capital of the capital of a state or a country, but what does that kick, what does that mean anymore? It doesn't so, mean anything because the enemy isn't in there. He's in the hills, just waiting for you to come and get him. So, Mark, uh, do you have any classes that address these kinds of issues or, or come close, maybe? Um, not anymore. Last year, I was in uh, in a Gov and economics class, and we talked about this stuff all the time. There were a lot of debates. We actually had a mock. We had mock trials and mock congresses and all. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, I'm in a- I'm in uh, AP European history, mm. so we do kind of touch on it a little bit, and especially a lot of the ones that have happened in Great Britain and France and such. Like we are just entering the Industrial Revolution and and all that. So it's really cool to analyze the modern day by the standards of uh, the 18th and 19th centuries. Well, I was going to say, if you had a, a civics teacher or a government teacher or something, they don't teach that shit in high school anymore. What am I saying? But if you had some social studies, maybe? If, they, if you had some teacher that was doing something on a related topic, I would love to hear you ask your teacher. I'd love to ask every high school teacher in America that's, that's propagandizing our, our youth with these issues what they would do if America was being uh, hit with drone strikes and actually killing children, and, and hopefully at least give them pause to put that in perspective. Mark, thank you so much for the call. Really appreciate it. Um, hope you're able to spread this message in your high school. You've got a captive audience. And spread this program. Yep. Yeah, we love it. We'll do, right? Outstanding. Thanks so much for the call. I'm so, I, I love it when high school students call. We have, we have so many younger fans that are, that are starting to, to wake up to this and, you know, being able to make this an engaging show that's fun and talking about porn. You know, that's all the kids, kids are talking about these days anyway. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> it's for the kids. It's for the kids, goddammit. In all seriousness, though, it is, it is really exciting when I, when I see the younger crowds. I, I've seen some, some wonderful activism from young people and like to see that. Absolutely. Because I can't call myself one anymore, and that's sad. <laughs> you don't have constitutional rights. You have natural rights. Yeah, it's critical. It's the, it's the blueprint of the nation. You could remain a sniveling little bitch, hiding your insecurity, 